in terms of Portland, what could happen? Well, I think people, if there were other things to do, I think they'd get tired of coming out every night. Be like, eh, I want to stay home and watch Netflix and chill. I want to, uh, you know, school's back in session or I've got another job. So maybe some people that didn't have things to do now that COVID is opening up, maybe they'll absorb back into where they were. I also think that, you know, probably every city in the history of cities has had a, um, you know, a rise and a fall and a rise and a fall. Sure, we've had destruction. Businesses have left. Things have closed, but inevitably spring will come again and it will be a new city built, you know, now maybe it's going to be affordable again. So you're going to have a whole wave of people that are going to come in and say, oh, I can do what people were doing in 2004. I'm the eternal optimist. So I, I think that that's inevitable. How long it takes? I don't know. And I'm not going to be there to be part of it. We sold our house. So, yeah. So I'm told that, that Zoomers are sort of the, um, counter-revolution and cancel culture. I hope that's true. Um, and it, it sort of makes sense that whatever the older generation is doing, you might do the opposite. But sort of the authoritarianism and intolerance of cancel culture, um, it strikes me that places like Clubhouse, um, I've spent some time on Clubhouse too, and it's, it is a place where you actually have to speak to people. Yep. And, you're, and you, you're supposed to use your real name you're not and, anonymous. You, yeah, you're not anonymous you know. and you're having a conversation. And I, I still, I've always been sort of a romantic about social media and I've been proven horribly wrong in the last couple of years, but it strikes me that the counter revolution is, is long form conversation and curiosity and, and a, a, not only a tolerance, but an excitement about hearing people yeah. from different perspectives. And, and I, I think we're both working towards that and, and hoping that that's true. And, and I, I, I gotta believe that my 16 year old self would hate cancel culture with a burning passion because that's who 16 year olds are. Yeah. Um, I think we are, you know, clubhouse, which I really wasn't very interested in until about a month ago when I joined. And now I, re I really, I, I really only go on it when I'm kind of running something I've popped in a few times, but it's very intimate. Um, the voices are intimate and you're really sort of thinking and you have to like wait your turn. And, um, we've created, you know, for, for all the horrors of COVID, we've created new mediums, um, in which to communicate, whether it's clubhouse or Substack or Matt Welch, horrible monster, Matt Welch. And I built a little studio Paloma media. We're podcasting out of there with the fifth column guys. And it's like, it's fun. And I think, I know people are angry, they want to break shit, but people really also want to have fun. And um, so let's give them some fun. 